planning experiment in IGCSE physics paper five and paper six could be very time consuming, especially when you are given one hour and 15 minutes to answer paper five while conducting the experiment could be very, very tedious, as well as paper six, which is one hour. So therefore, in this video, I am going to give you four top tips in answering IGCSE paper five and paper six. So I need you to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more important tips to be shared and to keep updated on the tips that I share each and every time on YouTube. As, and I need you to stay until the end of the video because while you're discussing, I might have some important information that pop into my mind and I might be sharing it. I do not want you to miss that. So especially paper five and paper six are just a few days away. So let us get started. Tip number one, whenever you look at that question itself, make sure that you read every word and understand the instructions correctly, not just by planning the experiment like what you plan to plan. So you have to look at the questions, uh, understand the instructions, and plan the, inst uh, plan the experiment accordance to the question. And tip number two, which is also very, very important, draw diagram. Unless the question itself stated that you do not have to draw the diagram, just then just forget about it. But most of the time when you answer um, paper five or paper six, you could see that they would state that you may draw a diagram if it helps. So if they you see that statement, make sure that you just draw a diagram. It is not just merely any diagram that you draw. It is a labored diagram. And please, the very, very important thing about the diagram is all the diagrams must be labored. So yes, do I need to draw even the question did not mention? If the question did not mention, or the question, if the question did not mention that you may not draw a diagram, or the question did mention saying that diagram is not required, then please don't draw a diagram. If they did not mention that you need to draw the diagram, then just go ahead with drawing. Because drawing the diagram, is very important, especially it helps you whenever you cannot finish answering the question in a given time. So the examiner will look at your labored diagram and then try to give mark from your labored diagram if they understand your diagram. And by drawing the diagram, it helps you to structure your methods or procedure in conducting the experiment more sequently instead of you just cancel here. Oh, I'm supposed to put this in the second part. Oh, I'm supposed to put this first. I'm supposed to put this first. Please make sure that your answer is not as messy as that. So drawing the diagram will help you to structure the plan. So tip number three. Answer the questions by following the sequence of the questions asked. When they ask you to explain briefly how the experiment should be conducted or should be investigated, just follow with that first. Give the method first. And then uh, after that, they ask you to state the key variables. Just state the key variables. Follow the instruction one by one. Oh, yes. And tip number four, whenever you are asked to tabulate a table, Please do not put in value. Hey, you are the planner of the experiment. You're not the one that conducting the experiment. How do you know what kind of values that you're supposed to put into your table, right? So just draw a blank table, but make sure all the headings of the tables are there. What is heading? So heading is a title of the table. So when you put in distance, right, please make sure that you slash put in the unit, something like this. So whenever you are measuring something like maybe distance, slash the unit uh, and maybe uh, time taken, just slash put in the unit. Do not put any values unless you stated values for distance. Start distance with uh, 1 cm, 2 cm, then you can put in the values. So it all depends on your method. So 
let us apply all the tips that I just give you. So I, I would like to read the question. First, this is one of the very recent past year question. And I'm going to use my whiteboard to answer this question instead of using the PowerPoint. So let me read the question here. A student investigates, you see, that is what I meant by read the instruction carefully. A student investigates the change in resistance of a lamp filament. So investigating change in resistance of what? Not the wire, but lamp filament when the current in the lamp is increased. Current is increased. So these following apparatus is available. Power supply, low voltage filament lamp, an emitter, a voltmeter, connecting wires. So other apparatus normally found in a school laboratory is also available. So you can use other apparatus in your experiment. So plan an experiment to investigate. What are we investigating? Read the question again. Change in resistance of the filament lamp or lamp filament, when the current is increased, when you are increasing the current, what happens to the resistance of the lamp filament? So resistance is given by the equation R is equal to V over I, where V is the potential difference across the lamp and I is the current in the lamp. You should, this is the instruction given. That is what I meant by read the instruction carefully. You're supposed to draw a diagram. So let me end the show here, and I am going to do this in my whiteboard. This is it. This is actually May, June 2023, paper 61. So I am going to start by answering the question by following the sequence. So first one, oh, they asked me to draw a diagram. So if you could see that the following apparatus is available, did they give you cell? No. Did they give you a battery? No, but they give you a power supply. So instead of drawing one positive and one negative, terminal, this symbol represents cell. So what is the symbol of power supply? You may want to draw a rectangular shape and label it as power supply, or you draw more than uh, one cell. So you draw more positive terminal and more negative terminal and label it as power supply. Don't just draw one positive terminal and one negative terminal and you state that there's power supply. That is not the symbol of the power supply. And then I would like to put on a switch here because they stated that um, other apparatus can be used as well. So this is my switch. Here, I make sure that my switch is open initially. And then I have my emitter because I'm supposed to measure the resistance of the lamp filament. And then emitter must be connected in series with the circuit. And then I would have, because I need to adjust on the resistance of the lamp filament and I need to vary my current, right? And to measure the resistance. So I am using this variable resistor or it is called real stat. The function of the real stat is to increase or decrease the resistance of the whole circuit. So therefore current can be altered. So I have my symbol of my lamp filament. Um, then I just make sure that this is a complete circuit. And then I have my voltmeter because I'm supposed to measure the resistance across the lamp filament. So voltmeter must be connected in parallel with the lamp filament. That's all. And do I just stop there? No, you can't stop there because I did explain that all the diagrams must be labeled. So I am going to label my diagram now. This is called emitter. This is called power supply. This is a switch that I use because I don't want, this is related to resistance. I need to make sure that my switch is open once the reading is taken. So to prevent my connecting wires to be overheated. That is one of the safety precautions that I use. These are all the connecting wires. And then this is lamp filament. This is my voltmeter. And this one, I try to save my word. So I put this as real stat or it could be called variable resistor to vary the resistance of the whole circuit. That's it.
this is my diagram and I'm done with it. So I put a tick to that. And the second part is that you should explain briefly how you how to do the investigation, including how to change the current. They did mention very clearly. So I'll put this in my method. So to be more polite, I would want the examiner to look at my diagram while I explain. So therefore I say set up the apparatus as shown in diagram. So I'm gonna shift this a little bit so that it's easier for me to write down. Then I'm gonna shift it back to read the instruction again. So second step. So I am going to close the switch. And then third step, I'm gonna adjust the because I have to include how to change the current, I have to adjust the real stat, uh, not just real stat, but the resistance of the real stat, resistance of real stat, um, by using the slider on top of it. So you could just adjust it by using the slider um, on real stat until the emitter sorry, until the emitter reading equals oh I better write it nicely reading equals to one ampere maybe I, I just give any values right and then after that take readings on volt meter that is in volt so resistance of the filament lamp or lamp filament, sorry, of lamp filament R, which is equal to V over I. Oh, here I just put I. And, um, or not here, I just put I here until the emitter reading, okay, I equals one ampere. And then make sure that the last step, always put repeat the experiment because, okay, repeating the experiment is very important. Physics experiment, repeat the experiment with I equals to maybe two ampere, three ampere, four ampere, and uh, five ampere and tick readings on volt meter and I'm done with that for my method so I put a tick there and then instruction number three you are supposed to draw a table so I am definitely going to draw a table but I'm going to draw my table here so it's easier for me to see table so what kind of table that I'm supposed to draw since I am adjusting the current so therefore Mm. This is a value of my current, current or I, this is an ampere, and this is the potential difference across a lamp, V, volt, and I don't have to explain R because they have already explained R in the instruction. So I just put R is equal to V over I and then slash the unit of R. And if you want to put in the value of the current, yes, you may put in the value of the current because you did state. You did stated the value of the current in the method. So I did stated that. So I'm going to put one, two, uh, three, uh, four, and five ampere. 
So I'm done with table. And the last part, explain how you use, how to use your readings to reach a conclusion. So most of the time, you know, when they ask about how to use our readings, since we have the reading, so many readings, why not just the simplest way is why not just plot a graph to see the relationship is the easiest way, right? So I would say that conclusion. So because you are, remember, it is not the graph of current against potential difference or the potential difference between current. Please don't do that careless mistake here because they did mention, look up at the instruction again, and I'm going to highlight this. Plan an experiment to investigate a change in resistance when the current is increased. So it is about the resistance of the lamp when the current increases, right? So therefore, I'm going to plot a graph, plot a graph of maybe a current, okay, I against uh, resistant. or just R to see the relationship. So that's all for your seven mark. I hope that you find this video useful and please do subscribe to my YouTube channel. But if you need any questions or any question from paper five or paper six that you find it hard and you want me to discuss it on YouTube, please do comment below and make sure that you have already subscribed to my YouTube channel. And thank you. I hope this video helps you a lot and see you again. Bye.